One quick tip for every Ableton stock plugin. No time for intros, so let's get into it. To quickly change between different filters in the morph setting, just right click the morph knob and set it to the filter you want. Use phase at 180 to put LFOs perfectly out of phase. This means it's super effective for creating that wobble vibrato. Match the rate with the rhythm of your synth to make it sound super wobbly. This gives an almost fake delay effect. It's pretty cool. The multiple modes of amp are based off of actual amps down to analog tendencies to the point where even as you turn these knobs, it emulates the amount of electricity that these amps would use, meaning turning up a particular parameter might actually decrease the energy of somewhere else on the amp. And this is especially true on the EQ controls. And that's why just like IRL, it's meant to be used with speaker cabinets. Good thing Ableton's got a common studio tech technique is to use multiple mics on a single cabinet. So to emulate this, pick a cabinet setting that you like, right click, group, create an audio effect rack, like this thing here, and just duplicate the cabinet. Get different mic types through this menu here, and you can adjust the volumes using audio effect rack for a more accurate guitar sound. It's not just for drums put it onto a melody and use the pitch decay setting. Sounds kind of weird. So let's chop it up actually. That's a good start, but combine this with saturator and bump up the lows and mids to add some intense lower distortion harmonics. Set the rate to about here and make sure feedback is over 90%. Then automate the feedback invert button to create percussive effects. Combine it with OTT and saturator to bring those out even more. Adjust width so it doesn't get lost in the mix. Start with a very percussive drum loop. Put a limiter after the compressor. Set the ratio to 10 to 1 or higher. Raise the attack knob to over halfway and pull the threshold down till you start cutting off the peaks. Lower the release knob till it sounds good. Use makeup gain to adjust the volume and a limiter so it doesn't clip afterwards. Combine this with saturator and you'll get a nice, thick, squashy drum loop. Use the kick tight preset to thicken up any bass sound instantly and adjust the gain for intensity. Make sure to click the little triangle and set the MIDI input to your bass track so corpus stays in key. This trick is really good on sub basses, so if you want the thickness, go for this. Do a glitch effect by picking any delay time and making sure that feedback is more than 90%. Disable the filter, disable ping pong, and make sure this filter slider is at zero. Turn the time slider to 100 and select the fade transition mode. Now, when you have the dry wet over 80, your sounds will sound like... This is the best transient shaper you'll ever use. Turn to the right for snappier transients or to the left for wet noodles. This doesn't have to be used on drums either. You can also use it on synths. This emulates tube saturation, AKA gives your sound a more analog or classic sound. Each of these letters determines the quality of tube saturation. A being super clean, and it won't distort until you turn up the bias knob. C emulates a broken tube, AKA distorts all the time. And B being good enough for me, but not my parents. And the results speak for themselves. Oh, <laughs> and if results are what you're looking for, don't just let your music sit on your hard drive unreleased. Even if you're going for label support, you gotta prove that your current music is able to catch traction on streaming platforms. And a friend of the channel, AKA this video's sponsor, DistroKid, makes this incredibly easy. In case you don't know already, DistroKid allows you to upload your music to online stores and streaming services. This means Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, Tidal, and more. And if you make EDM, for a little bit extra, you can hop on Beatport as well. 
With DistroKid, you get the power to have full control over the masters you send, all of the art you post, and you get access to free marketing tools like Hyperfollow, which gives you one link for your fans to both pre-save your release and put all your store links. Of course, a DistroKid never takes a cut of your earnings, and unlike labels, you get to keep all the rights to your music in perpetuity. What the heck does that mean? That means forever. The label said that to me once and I got confused. All this for only $22? Nah, I'll do you better. DistroKid's giving me a discount that you can use, so you should release that song. Get 7% off your first year of DistroKid using my VIP link and you'll be all set. Now, how many more plugins do we have? You can automatically sidechain your echo and delay effect to itself by using the character creator tab, switch on ducking, and pull down the threshold until the delay sounds clean. Right click the top bar and select oversampling. As long as you have the CPU to handle it, it cleans up all the frequencies and the higher range, giving that high fidelity sound that you'll find in plugins like FabFilter. So if someone says that their EQ sounds better, they're probably scamming you. Put one of these in an audio effect rack and then map both frequency high and frequency low to the same knob. Then just duplicate it a bunch of times and you have a disperser without spending money on a disperser plugin. Automate the frequency of the sign mode for a cool way to bring in other sounds or transition into different parts of your song. Bonus points if you combo it with the amount as well. I've never used this, I will never use this because I have no space in my budget or my tiny apartment for an external synth hardware. But if you have that, this is what you use to bring in those effects into Ableton and use them on any track. Still pretty cool if you ask me. <clears throat> Turn up the feedback knobs to make it sound like your stuff's underwater. Side chain a rhythmic loop like this to any other sound and turn down the threshold till it sounds cool to create complex rhythms that LFOs could never do. That's right. Gate isn't just for if your reverbs are too long and you gotta cut them off like your buddy who can't handle himself at the festival. Use this at the end of a track as a soft clipper while also adding warm distortion at the same time. When it's on your track, it won't go past 0.5 dB. So use that to your advantage. Just make sure that oversampling is disabled or else those higher frequencies will poke through past zero. One of the best granular effects you can use. Randomizing pitch and delay make complex masses of sound and rhythm. Do this by mapping LFOs to both time delay and pitch and then setting it to random. Play around with the rate until it sounds cool. Then automate the dry wet for your effects. This is like that three-in-one shampoo that the real chuds use, but it's reverb, so I'll give you three tips. Tip number one, you can switch between serial, parallel, and convolution reverb with this drop-down menu. When you go into convolution mode, you can drag in your own impulse response, like a chord. Put it onto a bass sound. Set the size and feedback to how you like. And wow, color bass. Outside of convolution mode, you can use the PRISM algorithm for a ghost reverb, which adds depth without interfering with the source material. And unlike 3-in-1 body wash, you'll actually want to use this. Make sure you put this on super loud noises to keep your mix distortion free. It automatically prevents overclipping as you start to add layers to your song. It's a good practice to turn the gain until it activates slightly so you keep the sound quality without having your sound sound overly squashed. This thing looks really cool, but I cannot for the life of me figure out how to use it. Ableton, help! All you need is the OTT preset and just put it on everything. Just play around with the output and amount knobs until it sounds good. It's best to put it on after effects so that it accentuates all the characteristics of those effects. But for real, I should probably make a more in-depth video on actual multiband compression. Choose a suitable kick with a long decay, like a 909. 
Choose the distort setting, click the sub switch on, and dial the gain in until it distorts. Play around with these knobs to uh, switch up the tone. Combine this with overdrive. This is one of the most versatile distortions because you can blast it loud but still keep the dynamic range. But unlike other distortions, at 0% overdrive, it still has an effect. So be careful about that. Another 3-in-1 plugin. So three more tips for you. Click this arrow to open up additional features like an envelope follower. This means the plugin only activates based on audio input that it gets. See how it matches with the rhythm? Use the doubler mode if you want to add stacks without duplicating the track and hard panning. Automate or turn the frequency up for glitchiness. Instantly lo-fi anything by turning down the rate. Turning down bits adds distortion. And combine it with reverb, delay, and erosion and automate it for cool transitions or additional textures. It's the other color bass plugin. Add it to any bass sound and put it in the key of the song, but since you watch my channel already, you know how to do that. So try it on percussion loops and resample it and chop it up for unique soundscapes. Reverse automate the dry wet to give the effect of a sound coming at you. Everyone uses reverb, so anything I put here you've probs already heard, so let's move on. This is another goaded warm distortion that can be improved for the CPU privilege by right-clicking and clicking high quality mode. For another way to get phasing, use extremely small amounts of pitch and keep the dry wet between 25 and 85. This only happens because the dry signal combines with the wet signal and you get the phasing strongest around 50%. Another resonator, which you can also use on percussive loops. Keep the decay low. Combo it with a resonator with an open voiced chord. Resample and chop it up. Onto a vocal, turn delay off. Set the freeze mode to re-trigger. Make sure it's set to the envelope mode and set the fade in to a really short time and the fade out to a longer time. Pull down the sensitivity till it starts catching the transient. Now bring the dry signal back in for a cool extraterrestrial fake reverb. Or just dry wet to zero, put it on your master, and you have a really cool visualizer if you need to post your clip onto Discord or Twitter. Same thing as the last tip. Use this to look cool on Twitter clips, especially if you're a rhythm producer. Also, the block chooser adds more lines. Or, you know, just use it for accurate analyzation of your song if you're into that kind of thing. Use this with a guitar to tune it. Right click the width knob to unlock mid side mode for a different kind of stereo processing. Instant lo fi vibes once again with this plugin. Add it for subtle high end texture and vibe, but don't forget to disable it with automation because it will go throughout your song even if you're paused and even if there's nothing on the track. Put this on dubstep basses on the Formant 5 preset for extra texture. Parallel process it for even crazier results. Also watch this video to see how Vocoder makes this thing. And we've made it. One tip definitely doesn't feel enough for some of these plugins. Should I make another one of these videos? Do you want me to go more in depth onto a specific plugin? Let me know down below. Biggest shout out to all the VIPs on Patreon. You're the reason I can make wild videos like this. Plus you can grab this project file on there to see all the ways I combine these different Ableton stock plugins. Now go make some bangers.